sodium benzoate and citric acid. Citric acid and sodium benzoate. Citric acid and sodium benzoate, when they mix, they make a carcinogen called benzene. That's not true. You can't make benzene from sodium benzoate with citric acid. I've made benzene from sodium benzoate before for funsies, and you can't do it with citric acid. And I know you can't do it with citric acid in particular because I went and looked into it. But when I looked into it, I found out that you can do it with vitamin C. And the story behind all of this just kind of fascinated me. Our story starts in like the 90s or so when the FDA was doing their job <laughs> and checking beverages for things that, you know, you don't want in your beverages like benzene, which if you don't know why benzene is bad, definitely go check out my video on benzene. But real quick, it's one of those famous carcinogens that comes with its very own special kind of cancer, no safe levels, that kind of situation. Anyway, FDA is checking beverages for benzene and they found some in Perrier, which I don't know how it got into Perrier. So the FDA, after finding this benzene in Perrier, decided to check a whole bunch of other beverages and they found benzene in a whole bunch of other beverages. And they were like, yo, beverage companies, what's going on here? And the beverage companies were like, yeah, what, what is going on here? And so after a little bit of lab work, they came to the realization that yes, sodium benzoate, when in the presence of copper or iron, can react with vitamin C to create benzene. And this blew my mind, like absolutely actually blew my mind. Be in particular, because I'm familiar with this chemistry in like a technical sense, and I know that metals, in particular copper, can catalyze what are called these decarboxylation reactions, where if you look at sodium benzoate, it's a benzene ring with this other little carbon thing coming off of it, and that's called a carboxyl group. And if you remove that, decarboxylate it, then you just get benzene. But the idea that it could happen in this mixture of things I thought was crazy. Fortunately, they also figured out how to kind of stop this from happening. So for one, you do need the copper or the iron, and thus if you use this stuff called ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, commonly known as EDTA, that'll kind of grab those metals and keep them from being able to do chemistry. The other thing is if you just use a whole bunch of sugar, I don't know if you've looked at the nutrition label on a bottle of soda lately, but something like 150% of your daily intake of sugar. Yeah, maybe that's why sodas have so much sugar in them now. But the other easy answer was to just switch away from vitamin C and switch to citric acid instead, which in my mind might be why some people claim that citric acid can do this with sodium benzoate. But no, actually using sodium benzoate with citric acid is how we stop the sodium benzoate from turning into benzene. But to be fair, it's there's like there's not going to be a lot of benzene. Like the FDA didn't necessarily find a lot of benzene in these beverages. They just found it, which, you know, no amount is a good amount. But the sodium benzoate is where the benzene came from. And there's not ever going to be that much sodium benzoate and stuff. It's used as a preservative. It's actually a very well tolerated and respected preservative because we've been using it for a pretty long time. That's why beverage companies, you know, switched away from vitamin C and just kept the sodium benzoate. If you didn't know, sodium benzoate we've been using as a food additive for like well over 100, maybe even 200 years. It's one of the ones that survived the poison squad. That's kind of how we know that it's safe. Side note, if you don't know who the poison squad is, you should probably just check out the PBS documentary on it because it's a really good documentary and it's going to be better than anything I can do. But Long story short, before the FDA was founded, a group of men were recruited, known as the Poison Squad, to eat a bunch of specially prepared food that just had a like kind of way too much of certain food additives that were used at the time. One of these food additives was borax. Another one was copper sulfate. Sodium benzoate was another one. Two of these things we don't put in food anymore. <laughs> so. We kind of know sodium benzoate is pretty safe. It works pretty well at what it does. It even has a couple like random niche medical uses that I only recently found out about, which that was kind of fascinating. But it still kind of shocks me a little bit that like, yeah, sodium benzoate, something that's generally speaking very safe and vitamin C, which I mean, if you didn't know vitamin C is safe, you should check out my video on vitamins because I talk about vitamin C in that video. But long story short, it's one of the most important vitamins and you kind of can't overdose on it because you, you, your body will just kind of get rid of it very easily. So like these two very, very safe things in combination make one of the most carcinogenic things that we've ever known. But you do need that extra ingredient, the iron or the copper. And that part also, I think, is kind of wild because in order for it to happen in the first place, it relies on the fact that vitamin C is an antioxidant and that's how it protects our bodies. 
In order to get into this, I gotta explain a little bit about how sodium benzoate works and how vitamin C works in the first place. So sodium benzoate is a base. It's kind of like sodium acetate, where if it takes a proton, it becomes benzoic acid. And this is actually how it works to preserve foods. So sodium benzoate, you put it in something and then it gets a proton from an acid somewhere and it becomes benzoic acid. And then that gets into the cells of molds and bacteria and it stops them from being able to do what they do. So they don't die, but they can't multiply. And this keeps your food from going bad. Now, as I said, though, in order for sodium benzoate to turn into benzoic acid, it has to react with an acid. And this is where the ascorbic acid or vitamin C comes in. It gives a proton to the sodium benzoate, turns the sodium benzoate into benzoic acid, and then it becomes this other thing called an ascorbate anion. But we can just call it vitamin C without a proton. Once vitamin C loses that proton, though, that's where the magic happens. That's where it becomes the thing that protects your body. Because due to reasons that are a little outside the scope of this video, vitamin C, when it loses that proton, gains a special ability to calm down and kind of trap electrons that want to wild out. And yes, when I say electrons that want to wild out, I mean free radicals. Those single electrons that are suffering from that extreme separation anxiety that electrons feel because they kind of need to exist in pairs. But when one of these free radicals comes in contact with vitamin C, that's lost a proton, the vitamin C can kind of become like almost like a playpen for that electron where it'll stay on just the vitamin C and not really react with anything else like proteins in your body or your DNA or some other important molecule that keeps your body functioning. It's a really great system, except when you have some copper or some iron around. That's when things get a little crazy because the whole reason why that's a problem is for the same reason that vitamin C is an antioxidant and it protects you. So let me explain. So you got your beverage, you got your sodium benzoate, you got your ascorbic acid, and you got your copper. Ascorbic acid gives the sodium benzoate a proton, it becomes benzoic acid, you got your ascorbate. Ascorbate's cool, chilling, and then some copper comes along. The copper's like, hey, can I have an electron? And the ascorbate's like, well, you know, I'm good with just having like one electron. I'm gonna let you live your life, copper. Here's an electron. You go forth with your extra electron. The copper's like, yeah, got my extra electron. And it's bumping around in your drink until it bumps into an oxygen molecule, which if you didn't know, oxygen's kind of a bully, but the oxygen bumps into this copper ion. It's like, hey, that's a nice little extra electron you got there. I want it. And the copper's like, but it's mine. The oxygen's like, you're going to give me that electron. The copper's like, okay. And the oxygen's like, oh, no, 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 electron. Because oxygen is pretty reactive, actually, as a molecule. Part of the reason why we breathe it and it keeps us alive is because of how reactive it is. And when it gets this extra electron, it becomes even more reactive. It turns into this thing called the super anion radical oxide. I don't like that name. That name has at least two words in it that mean really reactive, the radical and the anion. But yes, this is one of those reactive oxygen species that shows up in your body every once in a while. and. Surprise, surprise, vitamin C is normally what would, you know, keep it from doing something like stealing protons from important molecules in your body or tearing something else up. But here in our beverage, the superoxide anion radical is just going to snatch two protons from wherever it can and turn into hydrogen peroxide, which it's not a superoxide anion radical, but it's still pretty reactive on its own. And it will then react with either that copper from earlier or another one of these superoxide things, and that will turn it into hydroxide, but not just like lye, not just like sodium hydroxide, a hydroxide radical, which when I saw that at the end of this whole string, mind was blown, because that is how I made benzene from sodium benzoate. I reacted it with lye, with sodium hydroxide, and I had to cook it at 200 degrees on an open flame in order to make a little bit of benzene. But if you have a hydroxide radical just kicking around, yeah, it is just gonna tear it up. It's just gonna tear that, that carboxyl right off and yeah, you got benzene. This sort of thing blows my mind. Like, it's why I love chemistry because the whole reason this can happen is because, just because of how ascorbate works, how vitamin C works to protect our bodies. Its whole thing is that it can stabilize radicals. So yes, it has an easier time just becoming a radical. 
fascinating. Also, thank you to the FDA for, you know, catching the benzene in the beverages and thank you to the beverage companies for just, you know, kind of acquiescing and fixing the issue. And thank you to the chemists who took the time to figure out how exactly this happens. And thank you to you for watching through to the end. I know that was a lot of nerd, that was a lot of geek, but I am deeply fascinated by these things. They tickle me so much and I hope it also tickled you to hear that story. If you liked it, definitely appreciate if you hit that like button. If you generally enjoy my stuff, appreciate if you hit me up on Kofi or follow me on Patreon. If you got any follow-up questions, as always, throw them in the comments. And until next time, Skim Thug.